When we were house hunting, we decided to get some advice from a friend about which neighborhoods were desirable. He playfully remarked, if you spot lots of folks cycling down the streets, that's a sure sign it's a good suburb. It started as a friendly jab, but the more I thought about it, the more I got what he meant. To him, a great neighborhood means one that's easy to explore on foot. The sight of cyclists signals a place where you can stroll around comfortably, usually a sign of a well-planned community. These are the kinds of neighborhoods with their own unique vibes, where you don't have to be glued to your car. They're the spots where you can chill at a local cafe, wander down the street peering into shop windows, soak up the atmosphere, and just enjoy being in a friendly, welcoming community. Then I suddenly understood, why do Melbourne's outer suburbs often leave me feeling dull, lifeless, and lacking of uniqueness? This question has lingered in my mind for quite some time, and now, I believe I've found the answers. Allow me to share my thoughts with you. First of all, in my opinion, the outer suburbs are designed for car users, not people, making them unfriendly to pedestrians. Take, for instance, Old Geelong Road in Hopper's Crossing. While there are shops lining the road, accessing them without a car is nearly impossible. To reach the shop, you must navigate through vast parking lots, and if you wish to visit another shop, you'll find yourself returning to your car and driving to the next stop. Moreover, the high speeds of passing cars makes it impossible for pedestrian to cross the road without relying on the traffic lights. The absence of beautiful trees along the road adds to the industrial atmosphere, with noise and unattractive views making the experience of walking down the road rather depressing. Why would anyone choose to sit or walk along a road filled with air pollution and noise just to, to relax? They only visit the area when it's absolutely necessary. If you're thinking, who would want to linger there just to pass the time? I only go there for specific errands or purchases, it's fine for me. That's okay. But have you considered how the people who work in these shops get to their jobs? Most likely, they have to drive. When the neighborhood isn't pedestrian friendly, it often leads to a situation where one person drives to work, and that means the other family members also need a second car for tasks like taking the kids to school or childcare, going to work themselves, and attending appointments. This second car can become a financial burden for local residents. This brings me to my second point. Neighborhoods in outer suburbs are typically designed exclusively for residential purposes. Most of the shops and restaurants are clustered within a large shopping mall. And once again, this means you need to rely on your car and navigate multi-level parking lots to access them. Many of these businesses are part of well-known chains, lacking uniqueness. They offer nothing particularly special or distinctive. You can easily find another copy of the shops in other parts of Melbourne. In contrast, inner suburbs like Fitzroy and Brunswick are quite the opposite. In places like Brunswick and Fitzroy, the inner suburbs, you'll come across streets with a more diverse mix of uses. It's not uncommon to find cozy cafes on residential streets. Along their streets, you'll find unique shops, cafes, and restaurants run by local entrepreneurs, each with its own distinctive identity. Some streets feature live work units, where small business owners or artists operate their ventures on the ground floor while residing above. You can find restaurants with outdoor seatings, quaint boutique shops selling unique and handcrafted items, pocket-sized parks and small green spaces dot the streetscape. These individual identities contribute to the neighborhood's character and create an inviting atmosphere. Do you prefer spending your time circling a parking lot, struggling to find a spot, and then walking through polluted air to reach a shopping plaza? Or would you rather enjoy a leisurely stroll along a street, do some window shopping, and perhaps grab a coffee from a charming local cafe, have a chat with someone you know in the neighborhood before doing the grocery? The third reason why outer suburbs appear boring is that, in recent years, the facades of new houses have become increasingly dull and similar. To make the most of land value, front yards have been reduced in size. When walking through new housing estates, you will find almost all the houses share the same style and modern look with limited green plants or artificial grass. Look at these houses in Point Cook. Don't they seem alike? It's as if the neighborhood architect had a copy and paste obsession. Older neighborhoods often feature mature trees, lush greenery, and a variety of architectural styles for homes, 
making them more visually engaging when you take a stroll through the area. Consider St Kilda as another example of a pedestrian-friendly neighbourhood in my opinion. Here, you'll discover a bustling commercial street teeming with numerous shops, restaurants, and pubs. Just a short walk away, you'll find a playground, sports fields, open green spaces with a variety of public facilities where you can relax and enjoy time with your children. You won't come across a large shopping mall. Instead, you'll find a vibrant pedestrian-only thoroughfare and a beautiful botanical garden where people can immerse themselves in nature and enjoy the surroundings. Melbourne is a city bursting with unique characters and an artistic atmosphere. I'm here to implore urban planners. Please, let's not create another new dull neighborhood. Let's refrain from constructing suburbs that prioritize cars over people, where the streets are designed mainly for driving and parking. Instead, let's concentrate on establishing communities that where pedestrians can comfortably stroll, where there are sidewalks under tree shades, pedestrian crossings, green spaces, and a vibrant atmosphere that encourages people to walk, explore, and interact. Thank you for watching. How do you all feel about Melbourne's suburbs? I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences, so please feel free drop your comments below. Your insights are greatly appreciated.